Now this is going to get much more interesting, folks, because you saw Bernie up here fiddling with the iPad, wandering all over the place. Okay, I'm my own clicker, iPad, whole pieces here. So that's the part about him being the boss and me being the worker. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm going to try to manipulate this and show it all together. I did it the other day, didn't fall down, didn't you know, do too much damage here. So we'll see how we go. Because uh, I'm going to continue on a little bit more with this, with the presentation that he started. And tell you about our five key advantages along with this uh, in what we th think is the new platform. So let me go right to it. Okay, you saw the cloud-based software there. And I think Bernie gave you the best demo there that you could have seen of how we're envisioning the future with the idea of that, hey, your parts of communities, you can set them up whatever way it fits your business. So you can do anything from being connected. So, and what he didn't get to, which he was going to try to do really hard, is that not only from the iPad, but from, this is an Android phone that's actually connected over to our RxI box, of which you can control the outputs. You can control the inputs and the outputs, how it's running. You can look at the fault data. You can do about as much as you could do with the iPad. Instead, it gets really bad on your eyesight here from the little teeny screen. So it's the idea here that, again, we believe in the world that's coming that as we go forward here with the connectivity that this is, this is part of what you should see, what you should be able to do, and what those workers that he talked about, the new workforce, the ones that we see it here, the younger, much younger than me, so workforce here will be using as tools going forward. Now, the next piece of this whole thing is then, hey, how are you going to deal with this on the, on the system? And what is the engine that runs it? What's the thing that's going to run in these control systems and part of our advantages with the controllers? We're not abandoning anything we've done today, okay? Our systems today are on, run on a PAC engine. We call it the PAC systems engine. For the people who have them here that we've had this out, it's in currently in the RX3i and the RX7i, all the different systems here. It is the guts of the control. It is what runs the control system here. And it's going to continue to go forward. It's the idea here that when you run all the software here, you make your program, you go down, it's the firmware that sits on the controller, it's the PAC systems, whatever you have today, and whatever software, if you're using Machine Edition, our software programming software today with the RXI, the RX3i, it's going to program the RXI. And as we roll this out, and we'll talk about how we're going to roll this out to everyone because it's going to start this summer with the new environment. But it's going to be the idea that we're going to roll it out to universities, out to partners and customers along the way here, and roll it out kind of gradually, if you want to call it here, to get a lot of uh, momentum behind it. It will still, everything will move to there, but everything will still work with the software package that we have today. So. Again, it's all about, though, that, that PAC engine, because we made it so that it's portable, movable, scalable to the future for any operating environment, any hardware. That's what drives all these systems. The next part is the CPUs. This is where it's going to get interesting with this little video here, this little application on here, is that what Bernie talked about when he talked about the CPU over here having more power is that we had to figure out how do we do that and then how do we get around what Intel talked about when he said, hey, they give seven years, Intel comes into our plant all the time. And they show us their roadmap. We have all kinds of confidential agreements with them, so they show us where they're going. But they're all the time with the power. The seven years, very real. In fact, they used to be a little bit longer, but the recession that we went through said, hey, we aren't going to do all those lines that we used to do before. So we are now going to only do the really the high performance lines. And the high performance lines are all driven by the laptops that sit in front of you and the, the phones that sit in front of you. They're not driven by the industrial world, never have been. So it's the idea here now that, hey, we're going to use that technology. We're going to keep refreshing, but we have to build our CPUs different. And it starts here with how we're using the technology and how we're building that computing power. With the CPUs, and I'll just go over here to the, to the RxI here for a minute on it, because it's got the first piece of this. We're taking the processors and everything associated with it. 
So everything associated with a CPU, there's all kinds of chips. I kind of think of it as that you always see the aircraft carriers out there and the, all the films and everything, the big ships. There's 40 little ships that are all kind of servicing it, from everything they bring it food to protecting it, to all different kinds of things. The Intel processor, the big honking thing, has another little 40 little pieces that go with it. And so in there, and it's, it doesn't have to be Intel. It can be a VIA chip. It can be a, 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 another type of processor, any of them. They all have support chips along with the memory. So what we're doing is that we're putting them on a Com Express card. That is a standard technology. We build that technology. We've used it in the embedded world. It's used in the military world. It's used all over the place. Other people build them. That's our CPU, little small boards. We're going to bring one here that you can see, but they're just little teeny boards that have everything that you need on them. And I'll explain a little bit here with how it works in a minute, as soon as I get the demo going backwards on that part here of how you get use that board is that with that Com Express on the board, how it is is that, hey, you use a small board for all the things that you need associated with the CPU, the memory, all the power here. So it sits here. It can get, be in a harsh environment. It can be in a, say so on this box here, we're going to be able to go to a lower temperature, higher temperature. It's all about how much heat you can dissipate, but it allows us to do a more rugged environment around it. So. It's got everything on it, and it's got a connector. Now, you see this Type 6 here, and that doesn't mean anything to most people, but it means something or other to people that build the Com Express boards. It's a, it's a standard type of connector that you can run actually any high-speed network through, whether it's PCI Express or whether it's Ethernet, any type of connection, you can run this high-speed connection through it and connect to different devices there. And then the other part about it is that then what you do to customize it is that you build a carrier. And the carrier here is what makes it an RXI, or what's going to make it an RX3i. And I'll show that here. And this was made by one of the engineers who, who had better eyesight because he didn't make this large enough. But it's the idea here: you take the little, you take the Com Express, you put it on a different carrier, and it turns into the RXI, an industrial computer or a controller. You take the Com Express off, you add another carrier new carrier we're building for it, and all of a sudden now you put a box around it, and it's called the RX3i. Okay? So that way, we can keep technology moving. And when we literally build one CPU now, which will be that board, that Com Express board, we can now update everything. And the other cool thing is that we can not only update everything, but we can, we're setting a model that we're going to update these have a way to do it through the field, is that if you have one, you can either, first we'll set up that you can send it back in and be refurbished with a new Com Express, or the possibility, and we're still working with that, that you could actually do it yourself. Okay? So that, again, is the idea of keeping the refresh, keeping the technology going, but getting back to that part that Bernie talked about earlier here was, hey, you've got to be able to keep these processes going. You just can't take lines down. You've got to be able to change technology, but you've got to do it at your speed whenever you have downtime, whenever you want to change out pieces, not when we dictate. So that's all about extending the life cycle of our entire portfolio and expanding it, again, for the life cycle that you need. And again, like I said, this is all going into all our technology from the RXI to the RX3i to the RX7i. We don't have an RX7i shown here, so it, we didn't bring it along. It's a VME-based controller for people that don't know. So it has the same PAX engine in it. The RX3i is, for, is a PCI-based um, structure. We're building a carrier for it that will use the same Com Express card. So that will be coming out at the end of this year. And then all the systems here will have all the same technology across, across the board so that you can leverage it and upgrade it and keep the system going and use all this new software as we move forward, all the new pieces here to continue to get to the better um, you know, applications and more high-powered applications. Now, as we go back over here, let's, the other part is the network. Okay, And with that, 
when you look at the Profinet network, we have got it totally integrated into our system. So over here, if I walk across and look in here, we've got Profinet totally integrated into this box, going out to our I.O., going out to a converter that takes Profinet to Profibus from another company to other people's I.O. All connected up, all integrated, all easily put together. Same thing over here with the RX3i. And we have it in fiber or copper, anything you want, all together in the system here. And we've done it so that we're trying, when it, Bernie talked about earlier there, of minimizing what you expose or trying to reduce the components that connect up. Yeah, like in here, what we're doing is that we have small form factor pluggables so that you can take just a little device and either have any type of gigabit, 100 megabit, whatever you want, copper, fiber connection from that one module. All the switches built in, four ports, so that you can handle as many cables as you need. Again, uh, the idea here that we're trying to take and take as much stuff, external stuff out of it, make it simple, easy to connect, all the I.O. that you need, all the devices that you need, and make it so that you can do it the way you want to with minimal contact, minimal human contact, if you want to call it, to put the systems together. From the I.O., what we have connected to it is a whole line of different I.O. Whoops, backwards. Like I said, this is a, a work in progress here. But the other part is that all the I.O. that we offer, all different kinds. We have, Bernie talked about the Pack 8000, that's the one down there, the little green one down ne next to the bottom one there. That's a harsh environment I.O. What it does is that it has the ability to do very high temperature, very low temperature, it has G3 coating. Special coating that is more than conformal coating for harsh environment. We have even a genius replacement for people who have genius blocks out there. So the idea here is that you have a genius block that you can take the block off and put on a new block and add a Profinet connection. That we're working on to, to uh, introduce next year. It's the idea we're putting everything we have onto Profinet. And so as we go into the MPIs here, a little more detail, everything we're doing, every piece that we're putting together is all around Hey, connecting together, making high performance platforms, putting everything we have simply, easily out there together so that you can do the best application that you ever had and doing it so that it's now more advantaged with the new technology. And I'm going to stop here with the iPad because I'm just going to the presentation now. With the new technology, you can get at it anywhere from a simple, from an Android phone to the iPad to your computer, anywhere you need to be. So now I'm going to go a little more detail just into these, to these uh, platforms here. I just showed you the five advantages. When we go out here and we talk about the different CPUs, again, the different styles here, we're putting it not only in here into this RX3i, we're putting it into our big display systems here. This is called a Wolverine. There's more that goes into it. It's not only the computing power that goes into it, but it's also the ability to do high availability. So we talk about high availability. We try to make everything so that it doesn't fail down and make it as low cost as possible. So we have, you can put multiple power supplies in. The ring technology, we talked about all the different pieces there of, hey, you can have a ring and a node can go away and it can still, the line can stay up. Everything we're doing is trying to make it as, Harsh environment, high availability is possible. And all this is around what we're doing with some of these technologies here with the Com Express and making it faster, but also it's the ability of that. We're trying to add anything we can that will just keep the system back up and working. Out of these new CPUs, this is a new one that most people haven't seen. And this is the RXi box. And what's cool about this box is that what you see here is an IPC, and what you see over here is an RXI controller, so that's, like, that's a pack engine running on it, okay? It has on it what we call an IDM, so a display module, an intelligent display module that has, 
it's an option. You can get it with it, without it. And what the part about here is, is that we figured most people always want to be able to, one, to set up the Ethernet connection, get the faults, all these type of things, without having the computer, without having to set it through the software. And the whole idea with that is that you can do it, like I said, there's phones up here. And what we had running on the phone is an app that says, hey, I can take this app, and I'll just show it from here. We can pass, and we were going to pass it around and try to get, Bernie wanted to get you all into a little contest about who could get on and turn off the system and turn on the system quickly enough here and all that. And then we got into trying to play with it here, and we actually then sent it out to, not, uh, to um, uh, turning, we got everybody then just turning it off and on, off and on, and just having all kinds of things going on here. But it's the idea that it's an app that does everything right there. And it's connected right here with the same, you can see the same screen up here, you can't see it from there, right on this box. All about, hey, I can do it right there. If I don't want to, I don't have to. I just take this lid off and put this new lid on, this other lid that's sitting here on the IPC. I can actually stack things from the um, piece. I can actually put stuff together and have different parts and pieces, IPCs and controllers, multiple things stacked together. Some of the, these are just some of the features that are in there. The high speed interconnect bus means that, again, we can run things together very high speed. It's Ethernet internal, so if you try to connect an IPC and the a controller together and stack them together, it's really an Ethernet-based communication, but it's really high speed internally. We have all kinds of memory all kinds of storage capability, an SSD drive in there so that it's a solid state drive that has much larger memory into the system. USB cards, SD cards, Wi-Fi, all the pieces there into the system so you can have a control that's as smart as you want it to be. So I'll just uh, disconnect this for a second. Disconnect it from here. So you don't see all the music videos. We're not going to play any music videos. So on this part is that here, again, this is the part about the, uh, I know, you all were disappointed. You were ready to go right there for the music video. But in the RXI, again, it's the idea that I can stack, I can put together whatever I need. So from this box, connecting them together, and then cable out or wired out, wired or wireless out to whatever I need to go to from whatever different types of I.O. And it's all about it being, again, a scalable platform that you can update whenever you need to. The other part about here is that the RXI displays. So you can take this box, an IPC that's running Simplicity, and you can have this display, which we have the touch disabled, but this is the largest one that we have right now. And then there will be other smaller units. But you can take this whole display and you can connect it directly on that box if you want to and mount it together. Or you can cable to it. But it's the idea we're going to have multiple different ways for you to get whatever you need to run it together from, again, Simplicity, iFix. We, uh, and I think uh, we have Simplicity on both of these. I think we have iFix in some other areas here. But again, whatever you need to, whatever different software, I'll run it. We have all the different display capabilities so that you, again, can make your application whatever you need it to be in a modular form. On the RX3i, I think most people know this controller. So we've seen this for a, for a while. We introduced it in 2004. We continue to update it. We're adding all kinds of new things to its capability. And again, it's going to have the same power, the same processor, but it's a scalable control. It's the idea here that if you need multiple controls, so if you need multiple um, communication connections. I used the example the other day here of that someone that's upgrading a system that had maybe a 9070 with the Genius Bus, okay, and many Genius Buses together. They are probably in a steel mill or in a paper mill, are going to take that and redo part of it at a time. Nobody's just going to shut it all down at one time. So to do that, they're probably going to put in a couple ProConnect controllers, put in the bus controllers. They're going to put more, more connections in. 
It's the idea that that's easier for them to actually move the system. It, so we're, again, it's about flexibility. It's about the ability to then either provide a scalable solution here. They can give you many cards of different types and put it all into a rack, small rack, larger racks, whatever you need to be, or a di totally distributed system here with a head end and then just going strictly out from air with a uh, cable or uh, with Ethernet to distributed drop. So again, it's the idea we're continuing to improve it, continuing to add to the, to, um, the system. On the uh, portable pack engine, the parts that we're adding there, as Bernie was talking about the software and what we were doing with the, the software pieces, a lot of people have asked us for features over the years in the, in the controller and in the software, and they were totally related to each other. They were totally tied in it. And Tom Craven, when we get to the software piece, he's going to get up and show you a little more details on the new software. But when we went to the new cloud-based system, we opened up the entire structure of the control system. And what that allows us to do to even grow more on the PAC system engine is give you more flexibility on the instruction types, on the programming types, on the different programming pieces than we had before. So everything before, it all had to marry together. You had to get the right version of the software, you had to be able to handle it, the compiler, all the pieces down into the engine. This now allows us to do many more functions and allow many different types of programmers to actually tie into these controllers. So, for instance, a MATLAB can do, uh, do, do C code and download to something or another in the controllers. So it's the idea that we expand what the capability is within the system by having, with the pack engine there, we expand the entire control system. On the I.O., just going back over here, what we have the different types, and I won't go all through that. I want to talk a little bit about the new things that we have. But again, we have all the different types from the, from the slice I.O. up to the harsh environment I.O. and the modular I.O. And the thing we're showing here is that for people that have been looking for the Profinet connection, we introduced the Profinet controller earlier this year. We're introducing a Profinet scanner card for the RX3i that allows it to hang this rack of I.O. anywhere you want to out there in the system off of Ethernet at gigabit speeds. So again, we're adding more functionality to it. But probably the biggest thing that we've added recently are these two pieces here, are this piece here, the new RSTI, the slice I.O. And what that's giving you now is a granular point. So more granular than we've had before as far as the number of I.O. that you had and in a smaller form factor and a lower price point than some of the, the I.O. that we've had before with the Versamax and the RX3i. But let's say less functionality in some cases. But extreme amount of connectivity, a whole bunch of different I.O. modules, and the ability to run the power throughout the system there. All these connected up make a very nice small system with the RXI. Okay? Again, it's about a new way of thinking of whatever as far as putting all the system together with our RXI box or hanging it off with a redundant system over here with the RX3i. So again, a new system that we just introduced, it is shipping, so there are already installations out there with it, and it's the idea that we're trying to expand our offering to make it easier for you to pick and choose what you need for the system. Versus safe, that's running over there in the corner. That's our safety I.O., mainly for machine safety I.O. In this case here, again, the different types of I.O. you need for safety. This is all around you need light curtains, different pieces of safety. This is not process safety. And a way to graphically program the safety block. And again, all sitting on PrefiNet, all sitting integrated pieces here together. And usually safety is not a tremendous amount of I.O., but you have to have parts of your, part of your machine so have safe points. And we're showing it over here. Connect up usually in relation to a lot of motion capability, and that's what we're running over there. And then, again, the network. We're tying everything into the network, into the PropyNet. Went over that a little bit. But the one thing I wanted to point out here, we have G drives over here with the PropyNet network that is integrated. We already have the files connected, the GSML, the, the connectivity file, the configuration files already into our system. One other piece we're adding 
that's over there that we hadn't shown before a whole lot as a genius to Profinet converter. So we're putting that together now that it will allow you to bring an existing genius system, one of our systems for somebody here that doesn't have a genius, it's one of our older technologies there of IO, rugged IO, on a bus that's similar to like a control net or like a data highway or all the, any, uh, any of the other field buses. You can bring that into that one little device. It's going to be a little small device that just sits on either on the rack of the RX3i or it can be mounted separately and bring it straight into Profinet. And you can take all your programming, everything, and bring it on over. And it's the idea that now, hey, again, another modernization piece of where I could bring an existing line in and get some of the new capabilities with the CPUs and then move my technology that I need to newer I.O. at my time frame whenever I need to do it. So again, it's all about, hey, we're giving you all different options. We're putting it all together with the Profinet here. Again, like I said, we're putting everything on Ethernet. We've chosen Profinet as our, our standard for our protocol. Putting all the different devices connecting up directly into it. And so adding our technology on top of some of the pieces that come with the Profinet that make it even special or solutions. So the idea of the, the redundancy. We are showing our redundancy over here with the two CPUs, high availability system over here with an RX3i with Versamax, so I.O. And later on, we'll add the uh, RSTi on it. So I think that's at uh, the beginning of next year that it'll have the capability. But it will all be on a ring topology. One of these nodes can go down. When it goes down, there's a, this ring will continue to run. So it's all about that it can take one failure. We also have a maintenance mode that allows you then to then take this, put it in a maintenance mode. That doesn't look like a failure. You can still have a failure on the line, but all the system will continue to run. So we're putting the new technologies together, putting all the new pieces together so that you can put it, the best solution forward out there possible. 